glitch getting onto the video stream, so apologies for that. Um, what we're going to chat about today is we're going to um, talk about um, the retirement node in Sabaya, the demand for retirement. We've had quite a few webinars on retirement recently. Um, and, you know, what's coming out of, out of a lot of the market uh, sort of research and discussions we've been having is that retirement market is is actually um, no longer what we thought about it. You know, this you know over 75s and 80s, the retirement market is people that have retired from work. Um, that can happen at the age of 50. Um, it's people that want active lifestyles, that want facilities um, and, and the ability to grow old into a place, in, in a place that, you know, they don't have to keep moving out um, and moving downwards, um, you know, getting, getting more compact living. So what we're going to go into now is just really have a chat about as developers in the Sabaya region, what we've, what we, our vision is, what we're seeing going forward. Um, so first of all, there's, you know, retirement, it's a very, very um, niche market. Um, a lot of, lots been said on the funding for retirement, lots been said on about, you know, property is property, but retirement's very emotional. You know, often it's one of the last places that a, a person will buy or, or a couple will buy. So, you know, when we when we consider retirement and the, the developments going forward in the Sabaya zone, we've been very cognizant of that um, and really are developing a product on a, on, a, on a group of pillars, which we're just going to quickly talk about and then open the forum. Um, so the pillars that we, we, we're really talking about, number one, as always, is location. So, you know, the locality of Sabaya, beach access, shopping center access, hospital access, medical facility access, airport access and city access so it's it's all of that and then it's engulfed in, in forests um and on the coastline so you know those that, that's the paramount one there's no point having this amazing estate that's you know 150 kilometers away from from friends and family that are living in the let's call it the the, the schlanger um, urban area so i think there's a stat anything over about 60 kilometers from um, family will reduce the num number of times that retirees see their family by 50%. So everything has got to be within the existing sort of um, developed areas. So so buy is a new area, um, up and coming, and it's it's radically um, up and coming. However, it's only three kilometers from Schlange, which makes it absolutely optimal. And then it's obviously about 30 kilometers out to Belita. So it sits, you know, close to the CBD, but it's also not too far out if your family and friends are, are living in Belita. So you're sitting in that wedge. Um, so that's the first thing is location. Second thing is retirement. A lot of retirees want convenience living. They want on-site facilities. They want, um, you know, whether it be bowling greens or gyms or squash courts or tennis courts or you know, therapy pools or um, coffee shops, eateries. Those are the type of things. Even a, a lot of the market uh, research and, and feedback we've had is even jungle gyms because not that the retirees want to play in them, but their grandkids want to come visit them and they and they want to have a sleepover. The grandkids want to have a sleepover at Granny and Granddad's house. So those facilities, the lifestyle that surrounds it, then we add on to that, you know, the modern day retiree may may not want um, to live like a retiree of old. You know, they're going to be mountain biking and they're going to be jogging and swimming and all those things. So coupled with that, um, the ability to give those um, elements um, is, is very important. And that's something we're quite excited about. Um, the new mega estate that we are, we're going to be rolling out uh, through the course of, of probably next year. Um, uh, and, and what that does is feeds into the next thing is, is one of the big, big aspects of, of retirement is affordability. Getting in at a price that's affordable, um, you're not breaking the bank to get in, you know, selling your, your let's say, existing home and getting in. Um, you need to have a little bit of cash liquid left. Um, you need to be able to enjoy your lifestyle as well as having a house that you pay for and afford it. So the affordability is a massive thing. And then ongoing affordability, levies. You know, that's something that retirees need to look at closely, the levies to run the facilities. So um, typically what we see as developers, the bigger the estates, and I'm not saying they have to be a thousand units all in one cluster. It could be 10 clusters of 100. Um, the, the bigger the massing of that, the better the economies of scale, the ability to keep levies down. So, you know, a silly example, if you imagine a gatehouse for a community of 100 homes or a gatehouse for a community of 500 homes, still one gatehouse, still the same security guards, et cetera, et cetera. So that, 
that cost can be apportioned out much, you know, over a much bigger volume and in turn bring the levies down. So those are the things that retirees need to look at when investing as well. You know, not only is the, the, the let's call it the, the entry level cost of the unit or the apartment or the home, but it's the, it's the longevity. What are the levies going to be or how are they going to run over the next 10 years? Um, and then on top of that is, is the developer going to use that money in the right way? So does the developer have track record? Does If you go and have a look at a developer's um, projects that he's done, are they in good nick? I mean, are the pools run well? Is the landscaping run well? Those are also, you know, sort of very important aspects, particularly if it's one of your last homes. You want to make sure it's run well and the funding monthly from you is kept low. Um, the other big thing is the setting. So, you know, not just... We, we, we've talked on a couple of other forums about macro and micro location. So micro location, i.e. the setting, what is it? You know, is it is it just, you know, smarty boxes all jammed up? No, that's not how people want to retire. So are there green belts? Are there green lungs? Can you walk out of your back garden into a, a green uh, corridor and then go down and meet your friends at a, at a let's call it a, a bowling green or a clubhouse and then walk your dog in a dog park and all those type of things. So it's, it's those settings, the tranquility of having, you know, let's call it open green spaces blended with, you know, quite tight community living, but just the ability to go for a, a walk if you want and, and have large, open, secure tracts of land that you can access. And that's also one of the best, best, um, you know, positive aspects of having a large mega estate that you can have these pods of, of development sitting inside one, you know, overall larger estate. Um, and then I think the other the other big point, which obviously is also it should be top of the list, is security. You know, the security is it's not even an item to discuss anymore. Security, connectivity, you know, um, fiber optics, all that stuff is is I think, um, you know, most developers if you're not if you're not seeing that as a that's not even an add-on. It's actually now it's something that you have to have. It has to we have to have proper uh, Wi-Fi access, proper um, cabling through all the streets, going through all the fences. To the cameras, biometric or scan, hand-free touch accesses with this coronavirus, um, smart technology, ability to track. Um, you know, so if you if you go out or your husband goes out, you get a message that look, um, you know, Bert has left the gate at, at at on the east side, so you know that he's gone down to the beach. Or he's, you can really sort of use the the backbone of infrastructure for a lot more things in security. It can also be, you know, information. Um, so then the other, the other big the other big component component that people in South Africa tend to look at more than maybe what the trends of, uh, overseas are doing is life rights versus you know buying off plan and, and, and all, owning it as your own units as a real right. Um, you know South Africans typically don't have a platform to go back to like a big pension or a government pension scheme or an attenuation fund or anything like that. So. You know, we see a lot of the, the retirees wanting to buy and own. Um, you know, I've done a lot of talks about how the value of properties, you know, in, in secure estates and good locations continue to rise, uh, and, you know, rises year on year on year um, at roughly that 7 to 9% per annum. Um, and obviously that's compounded. So the value of the property that you buy, you know, continues to compound if you own it. If it's just a a life rights you don't have that you know you don't have that that um that capital appreciation doesn't really belong to you it belongs to the developer so that's something we see in the durban particularly in the durban area and i think it's a south african sort of thing that you really want to own your own property because it's a legacy that you can you can then obviously leave on to the next generation so they can sell it and so on so that is it's, it's, it's actually bucking the international trend most of the international properties are life rights um, what that means simplistically is if it was a 3 million rand property, you might buy it for 2 million, but it's a life right. So when, when you, you and your, and your husband or when your, and your wife, uh, pass on the, 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 the value of the property of 2 million that you paid goes back, um, to the trust or whatever entity it is. And the upside, i.e. all the profit goes to the developer and he sends, sells that unit on. So, um, it doesn't allow you appreciation and capital. Um, that's there's quite a few options on it, but that's simplistically what the difference is. Um, the other couple of things that we we also, you know, I think one of the big things is a lot of retirees have got a vast amount of knowledge, want to continue working from home, so the ability to design a little um, 
a little um, study into a retirement space that you can continue generating money from, or even a little annex where you've got a little Airbnb that you're running or something. I think those are the new ways that retirees are looking at generating a little bit of extra money, as well as, you know, obviously keeping themselves active mentally um, and, and uh, the ability to maybe cater for a little Airbnb market or to run a little um, uh, a hobby business or even quite a large business um, from home, especially now with the advent of COVID, how we've seen how we can actually um, do a lot of work, you know, through these type of facilities. So that's really where we are on retirement. What we're planning as developers is we've got a um, large, large uh, chunk of land, which we're allocating for freestanding retirement in Sabaya, um, ones, twos, and three bedroom units, um, all freestanding. Um, we think that uh, pets are an absolute essential. Um, the ability to have your own bit of lawn where you can do your gardening or your veggies or your, um, and then have your pets as well. So, and the ability to keep that price point down. So, um, you know, we've got a really fantastic piece of land that we've acquired. Um, and over the course of, 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 of next year, we're going to roll out um, a really very high end modern facility addressing all those points that I've just talked about. Um, uh, probably in the region of about three to 400 units. Um, those will be sort of little freestanding homes, as I said, um, and then the clubhouse facilities, you know, scattered amongst them. So not just one big clubhouse, you know, more sort of pods that you can move move between. With that as well, um, there'll be some um, retail, which is your convenience shops, your, once again, going back to the word convenience, the ability to just walk to a hairdresser, to walk to a coffee shop, walk to Woolies, um, and and those are the, the facilities I think that we, we, we see as, as, as essential for retirees. Um, the the add-on option or the medical facility as well. You know, we've got a, a really great frail care facility which we can tie in an existing at Sabaya that's going to be finished in the next two to three months. Um, and then on top of that, I think the ability to blend retirement with, um, you know, sort of, it's called it family living as well. So you've got your family homes and family um, estates uh, blended with a, a, an annex of retirement so that you've got this, um, you know, you don't want just retirees in a, in, a, in, a, in a state, you want a blend of young and old and kids. Um, and it, it really thrives when, when you've got those blends. That's what we're actually planning on doing, really excited about it. So, okay, we're going to go to some questions. Do you have any future plans for retirement in the Sabaya Coastal? So, yes, I mean, obviously, I've just um, chatted about that. So we definitely have got some plans on that. We think that um, the Sabaya um, just ticks all the boxes. I mean, as, as a developer, we, we, we are, when I say excited about the node, we are like frothing to get into it and to actually activate it quicker. We think that it ticks every single box, um, sustainability, new modern living, um, massive open areas, um, you know, over 100 hectares of just open areas that won't be developed. Um, that are private and secure and accessible, um, ranging from sea areas to lagoon areas to forest areas. Um, you know, so those are the things that I think um, the modern day lifestyle, particularly you know what we're going through now, um, realizing that having a 2,000 square meter lawn actually isn't what you want or need. Um, you just want an area that you can go walk in or put, um, go have put a golf ball, or throw a frisbee, or walk your dog, or whatever it may be, but you don't want to maintain and look after it. So. We can embrace all of these things we've learned and put it into our, our, our new, um, new new development. Um, so for a chance of virtual sports, visit, okay, so the interactive modules come up here. So please have a look at the Invest Sabaya module. Um, it's on the Invest Sabaya website. Um, really gives you a good indication of what's happening in Sabaya, what's planned, what's coming. You can actually zoom in and really get some really good uh, imagery from a, a 3D uh, helicopter that was shot uh, just before lockdown. So. Um, really gives you a good good idea of scale, size, and where it's going. What should future retirees be looking at when investing in an estate? Yeah, so I think those points I've just talked through are, are really the, the fundamentals of what um, you know what what retirees are typically looking for: um, entry level cost, sustainable cost monthly, great facilities, access, location, um, safety, security, and then the diversity of the mix inside. So having young families, having, um, you know, some old retirees blended with some quite young hip retirees blended with lots of activities, 
um, whether they be you know in a clubhouse in the form of card rooms and billiard rooms and dart rooms and pubs, plus you know on the sporting side you know fishing and golf and uh, bike riding and all those type of things, surfing, um, all, all those things that a lot of our you know let's call it over 50s, not even retirees, over 50s uh, want to enjoy. Um, what age should we start looking at purchasing our retirement home? So you know that's that's a hell of a tough one. I think retirement is, um, is, is it's not. Retirement isn't a word for old. Um, you know, some guys are retiring at 40. So would they go into retirement home? Um, no. Uh, or retirement estate? No. Uh, but, you know, they've retired. Uh, counter to that is that you've got an 80-year-old 80 80 surgeon still working um, and he hasn't retired. Should he be in a retirement? Yes. You know, so it's it's really a blend of, yeah. of you know, what, what you deem as retirement. But I would say know, as an investment, just purely as an investment, the demand way out, outstrips the supply. So 50 years plus, I think, as an investment to get a nice little retirement uh, place in a retirement estate and just rent it out is as good as any other property. Um, and it gives you a backstop into obviously somewhere where you could go one day um, when you're ready or when you feel like it. Um, and I don't believe that it's an age thing. I think it's more an investment thing. And a, and a lifestyle thing that you that you're buying into. Um, right, is it wise to look at investing into retirement estate at a young age? I'd say you know young young age. I would I would say rather go into a normal property. Um, it's a much wider market, so you're not just focusing on retirees. So for example, a two bedroom, uh, let's say a ground floor apartment. It could be for retirees, young families, single professionals, you know, so you've got a much broader spectrum that you're investing into. Um, as a younger person, so I'm saying, let's say, sub 40, I would go there. When you get into the 50s, I think it's it's an, it's it's nice to know that you've invested in something that you can get a yield back, but at the same time, it's it's maybe somewhere that you're planning on going to. Um, life right sectional title or free state, which is the better option? So I think that's a... That is a big question. It's a huge, uh, there's a whole lot of information behind that one. But as I've said, um, maybe that's another session we'll talk about. But as I said, typically, um, you know, South Africans do like the uh, the free the freestanding or sectional title option when you buy and acquire. Um, but international trends are, are actually life rights. If a retiree wants to sell his home first and use the proceeds of that sale to secure his investment, are there provisions for this kind of deal? Would you accommodate this story? So yes, I think that's yeah, it's sort of like the um, you know the it's like we call it a, a subject to sale. So it's you know you you buying a property on the basis of, of selling. So what we've done as developers often is we say okay you know we'll give you six months to sell your property um, and then we'll hold hold that unit for you or, or something along those lines. So I think um, it's definitely you know if you get a, a developer that's more of a, open and amenable to discuss your criteria. I think, um, I think those type of options are available. And, um, you know, obviously you can use the, um, a lot of the developers will have uh, in-house estate agents that, um, that will go and assist you or facilitate that transaction. So um, I think we're going to keep it short. I think we're just approaching 20 minutes. So just to wrap up, um, I think we're going to do another one or two sessions on retirement and what's coming, maybe a little bit more detail in the Sabaya precinct on that. Um, but um, we'll, we'll, we'll defer that for now. But just in a, in a nutshell, Sabaya is an up and coming area. We, we, we've talked about interest rates being cut. We've seen how um, what it's doing to our numbers uh, in terms of repayments. The, the value of properties in these estates is continually going to rise. Um, the value of freestanding homes is continually not rising or dropping or stagnating. Um, so that rift is growing. Um, it's a perfect opportunity to get into into any of these, you know, um, de new developments, off-plan uh, developments that you're not uh, paying uh, big transfer fees, etc. It's the real, really ideal time to to get involved in, in something off-plan if you are planning on retiring. And this, you know, this product's only around in two years' time. Have a look at buying something else, and you know, and flipping to get into into a, a retirement um, retirement concept model of some sort. Um, we have heard, you know, that the banks are talking about another interest rate cut quite soon. So, you know, I think it's a perfect time to buy, and uh, really believe it survives the location. So, everyone.
everyone stay safe. We will be doing another session, which we will send the video out. Um, yeah, hopefully you hear some uh, unlocking of the economy throughout the later part of this week. But uh, yeah, God bless South Africa. Stay safe, everyone.